The movie begins in outer space on a massive alien mothership. A creature observes Thomas Whitmore's speech during the battle 20 years earlier. The creature growls, and suddenly, Whitmore wakes up in a jolt. But it's just a nightmare. Civilization has gotten restored, and relative peace among nations exists following the human race's victory over the aliens' attacks. Major cities worldwide, including Washington, D.C., were rebuilt and modernized with amalgamated technologies. Later, the current president, Elizabeth Lanford, practices her speech to celebrate their victory 20 years ago, in 1996. She thanks Patricia, Thomas's daughter, for writing the great speech. Lanford welcomes Dylan Dubrow Hiller, the military pilot's captain and Stephen Hiller's son, to White House, who died years after the battle. Patricia and Dylan greet each other as old friends, and she reminds him to be nice to Jake, her fiancé, who's on the moon base. Meanwhile, Jake Morrison is on Earth's moon at the Space Defense Station, working in a ship with his best friend, Charlie. The machine loosens and nearly collapses onto the base, but Jake uses his pod to lift and safely secure it. He later gets criticized for it by his superior, General Zhang Lao. Zhang grounds him until further notice meaning he won't pilot any aircraft for a while. General Joshua Adams arrives at the Space Defense Headquarters in Area 51, Nevada. He gets called to the alien prison, where captive aliens have been kept alive since the first battle. For the past 20 years, they have been catatonic. Still, suddenly, a couple of hours ago, they all became animated and agitated. Director David Levinson arrives with Floyd Rosenberg, a government appointed controller on a UN research mission in Central Africa. They're at a base to meet warlord Dikimbo Umbutu. There, David runs into an old flame, Dr. Catherine Marceau. They're at the side of a crashed alien ship. Umbutu tells them that the ship's lights turned on themselves two days ago. David and Catherine determined that the boat was drilling into the earth at that point. It stopped when they blew up the mothership. However, they're still determining precisely why they were preparing. Umbutu tells them how he and his men fought the aliens and seized their weapons. The ship they have found has also sent a distress call to its home planet. They sent the distress call 20 years ago, but someone has finally answered it. At the moon base, Jake and Patricia video call each other. Patricia tells him about her encounter with Dylan. She tells him they should finally talk since Jake almost accidentally killed him during training. Their call is cut short by a power surge in the base and Patricia looks sadly at her, Jake, and Dylan's picture during their training. Patricia was a pilot for the military, but she resigned to take care of her father, who was more frail and disturbed after the invasion. The International Legacy Squadron, headed by Dylan as captain, takes off for the moon base. Charlie immediately gets obsessed with one of the pilots, Rain Leo, who coincidentally is General John Lau's niece, Charlie tells Jake how Rain Leo is Charlie's soulmate in the moon base's cafeteria. Silence falls upon the room as Dylan walks in, ready to confront Jake. Dylan returns the favor by punching Jake in the face. Jong asks Jake about it, but he only says that he slipped because the floor was slippery. Later that night, Jake watches a video from their flight training years ago. Dylan's plane crashed because of Jake's cockiness. Still, fortunately, Dylan was able to use the ejector seat to save his life. After all this time, Jake still feels guilty about it, as it also causes their friendship to fall apart. In Maryland Whitmore Hospital, Area 51, Dr. Isaacs visits his partner, Dr. Brackish Okun, who has been in a coma for 20 years. He brought him another pot of orchids as a gift and a scarf he knitted. He puts it on Brackish when suddenly he jolts up awake. Meanwhile, General Adams gets a report from the Hubble telescope. There's some force pulling at Saturn's rings. Their defense based on one of Saturn's moons is also gone, as is its moon. General Adams puts out a red alert, informing everyone of a possible attack from outer space. In Africa, David gets a report that they've lost all contact with their Saturn base, so he orders them to contact President Lanford. Catherine tells him about her patients who have encountered the aliens, and they have all drawn about a sphere. Mbutu claims to have seen visions involving the aliens and has also drawn about the sphere. He and his people have learned to decipher the aliens' language. He claims they were getting hunted, so they had to learn to track them in return. They all get an alert in the moon base as they see a wormhole near Earth's moon. 
an unidentified spherical ship emerges. David tells Lanford that the ship isn't like the one that attacked them, and some of the World's Council agrees to hold off until they know more, but most of them vote to attack. Considering it a threat, Lanford orders it to get shot down. The moon base team fires its laser cannon at it, sending it crashing. All teams celebrate, believing they have scored another victory against another alien species. It crashed into one of the moon's craters, with no signs of life detected. David insists on getting the team to investigate it, but Lanford tells him to do so after the celebrations. Later, Thomas Whitmore and his daughter, Patricia, watch President Lanford announce that the Earth's space defense program has successfully repelled an alien attack targeting the planet. Thomas insists that it wasn't them and that he has to tell the world. Matthew, his bodyguard, tries to calm him down by reminding him to take his medications, but Patricia dismisses him. Patricia tries to comfort her father's well-being as he insists they return, referencing the aliens that invaded 20 years ago. In Africa, Jake arrives in a stolen space tug to pick up David at the crash site of the craft on the moon, while Catherine, Umbutu, and Floyd insist on going as well. They approach it, and David says it's the same sphere from which Catherine's patients and Mbutu have been drawn. Meanwhile, David's elderly father, Julius Levinson, is at a retirement home. He advertises a book claiming it was his idea that he was responsible for saving the planet. In Washington, D.C., a celebration for the 20th anniversary of the victory over the invaders gets held. Several veterans from the first alien invasion attend, including an elderly General Gray, Lanford credits the moon base team for their effort. Surprisingly, former President Thomas walks up to speak. Still, as he gets introduced, he tries to warn everyone that they're coming back. At the same time, he, Umbutu, and Brakish all experience the same sensation. An excruciating headache has occurred. At that moment, high above the Earth, an enormous ship, many times larger than the first mothership, approaches Earth. Jake tells Charlie's to come to get them, and they manage to get on the ship. Jake takes over, piloting the ship while Charlie grabs the sphere. General Adams orders the activation of their defense systems and shuts down the celebrations. The enormous alien ship has its gravity. It pulls Jake's ship back. The moon base fires at the ship, but the ship has a force field, so their attack fails. The alien ship's laser powers up, and General Jang orders everyone to evacuate, but it's too late. Their lasers fired at the moon base, killing Jiang and several others, which Rain witnessed. Dylan orders his squadron to fall back as they can't attack the enormous ship. President Lanford ordered the orbital defense system to get initiated. Still, the alien ship shoots its lasers at it, which destroys it all. The ship moves over the Atlantic Ocean, and its gravity pulls China and Dubai, causing destruction wherever it goes. London, Shanghai, and Dubai get destroyed when skyscrapers, cars, and people levitate in the air and crash back to the ground. Jake manages to avoid debris falling from the sky as they try to make their way to Area 51. Meanwhile, Julius is riding his boat when the attack hits, and a large wave hits his boat. Amid the chaos, Dylan sees his mother, Jasmine, on a hospital rooftop as she leads a woman and her newborn baby. The woman and her baby get rescued, but Jasmine perishes when the building collapses under her while Dylan sadly watches. Soon, Thomas and Patricia arrive at Area 51, and General Adams welcomes them inside. Brakish gets out of bed and scribbles alien symbols on the walls of his room. He follows Thomas, and they see the imprisoned aliens screaming in celebration. Thomas goes to the holding cell of a captive alien. David and Catherine also arrive and they see Thomas locking himself in with an alien to communicate with it. The alien uses Thomas to say she is coming. Catherine approaches, showing the drawing of the sphere and asking the alien what it means. The, the, the alien grows more erratic, choking Thomas, so the soldiers shoot at it, but it grabs one of the weapons. Mbutu shows up and kills it from behind, then decapitates it. Later, Julius gets found by four kids driving away from Florida after being separated from their parents. Meanwhile. General Adams' team picks up an infrared reading from the new mothership, where they spot the alien queen in a chamber at the top of the craft. They get information that the alien ship has a plasma drill, and David believes that they're after the Earth's molten core, which can end all life. They figure they can stop her fleet if they can kill the queen. 
Lanford authorizes the retaliatory strike. Later, Jake finds Dylan and offers condolences. Jake says he knows his pain since his parents were killed in the first alien attack when he was a child. He encourages him to go out and lead the team in attacking the alien ship. A boat of men searching for gold near the drill site gets contacted and they get offered money to send back information and help stop the drilling. They jokingly tell the government they want $100 million and get immediately given the amount. They immediately started their monitoring. Later, Julius gains consciousness and asks about his rescuers. He suggests going to his son, David, at Area 51. The newly refitted Earth Space Defense Aerial Fleet attacks met with heavy resistance from the mothership and a new design of alien attacker ships. The pilots fly into the ship and begin unloading on any alien that crosses their path. Dylan leads a counterattack inside the ship. However, they get ambushed as the alien releases an electromagnetic pulse. It makes their planes crash, leaving only a few survivors, including Dylan, Jake, Charlie, and Rain Lael. The alien warriors also attack Lanford's command bunker in the mountains of Colorado, killing her and most of her cabinet. At the same time, at Area 51, General Adams gets sworn in as her successor. Meanwhile, Brakish breaks the container open and uncovers a large white sphere, unlike the one shot down. Unsure of how to open it, Floyd activates it by touching it and the sphere comes to life. The Queen's chamber aboard the large ship separates and flies off, looking for the alien sphere. Later, the sphere speaks English and explains how the race that it belongs to got extinguished by the alien harvesters. The aliens absorb their planet's core to refuel their ships, something they have done to countless other planets. The sphere also states how it attempted to evacuate Earth, but couldn't since the moon base shot down the ship needed for the evacuation. David plans to lure the queen to an isolated area where they can kill her with a nuclear weapon. Patricia volunteers to lead the attack, but Thomas makes it out before she can, knowing it will kill him. Later, Julius comforts the oldest girl, Sam, as she cares for her siblings and has no idea what happened to their parents. Julius takes over the car until they come across a school bus full of kids whose driver abandoned them. Julius brings the four kids onto the bus and drives with all the other kids. In the mothership, all surviving as his pilots escape by hijacking enemy craft. Dylan, Jake, Charlie, and Rain navigate two harvester fighters to pursue the Queen's ship, heading to Area 51, to extract information from the sphere about the refugee planet. Meanwhile, the pilots all get ready to fight as David prepares himself at the site of the attack. As this happens, Julius drives the bus toward David's location. Later, Patricia leads her father's plane to the mothership. Thomas flies into the ship as the Queen's shields go down. Once she's in the trap, Thomas detonates the bombs, destroying the ship at the cost of his life. Everyone prematurely celebrates as they think the Queen is dead, but she's still alive. The enraged Queen, which stands around 100 feet high, rampages through the deserted area, attacking the pilots trying to strike her down. The drill is also getting closer to the core by the minute. David drives the bus, running away from the alien queen. The queen moves to attack the bus. Patricia flies her jet above the queen and fires at her shields. She brings them down as the queen's fleet swarms around her for protection. During the fight, when the harvester queen lowers her shield to fire her weapon, a critical hit by Patricia deactivates her shield. Jake, Dylan, Charlie, and Rain arrive just in time to protect Patricia. The imprisoned aliens manage to escape their cells, and they find the sphere. Using their hive mind, the queen knows where the sphere is and heads to Area 51. Floyd and Umbuta manage to kill the escaped aliens, but Isaacs gets shot by an alien and dies. More escaped aliens are coming, so an enraged breakish kills the incoming aliens. The queen and her swarm attack the base looking for the sphere. Jake Dylan, Charlie, and Rain fly in the swarm, trying to gain enough speed to escape the assault. They break free and shoot at the queen from behind. She's mortally wounded and bursts out of her exoskeleton until she collapses and finally dies. The other aliens get brought down and the drilling ceases. Once again, the Earth gets saved. Jake and Patricia reunite, and they kiss. Charlie asks to kiss Rain, but agrees to dinner, much to his delight. The mothership ascends and leaves Earth. Brakish then approaches the pilot and David with the sphere. 
He's stating that it can offer them new technology and weapons should they take the fight against the aliens into space before they come back. The movie ends as everyone agrees, and Brakish says it's time to kick alien asses.